Hello. Well, today, um, aside from finishing off the uh, Scream franchise, I thought of doing just another video just before the year is completely done. <clears throat> and uh, I debate about this, whether it should be saved for next year or be like the last video of this year. And uh, yeah, I've decided to just do it now. Uh, well, it's still fresh in my mind as I watched it recently. Um, and that is, you know, the 10th anniversary of the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo starring Daniel Craig and Rooney Mara, um, directed by David Fincher, and also has Christopher Plummer, Steven Skarsgård, Steven Burkhoff, and Robin Wright. Uh, you know, just an incredible cast. Uh, the film, as it says you know, on the back, uh, disgraced journalist Mikael Blomqvist accepted an invitation to a surreptitiously uh, investigate or uh, basically to investigate a 40 year old one's own murder on behalf of the victim's uncle, Swedish industrialist Henrik Wagner, uh, Wagner uh, by uh, Christopher Plummer, and while, meanwhile a tattooed hacker Elizabeth Slander by Rudy Mara. Mara um, hired to investigate with Blomkist, um and discovered the truth behind the conspiracy that led from his fall from grace. Um, yeah. yeah, well, she finds out how to, about what happened with uh, Mikhail Blomkvist's uh, fall and what made him a disgrace. Um, and then they're thrown together by Fate and the unlikely do uncover a secret history of murder and sexual abuse uh, f festering beneath uh, near Sweden's industrial past, all the while drawing closer to a quiet evil waiting to engulf them both. And uh, this is an incredible um, just film from beginning to end. Um, I have read the first three books. Um, I have the fourth. I know there's a fifth. I haven't gotten that for some reason. Um, but, you know, Stig Larsson, I believe that's how you pronounce the name. If not, apologies. Um, there's tape to tape all of this to the back, because otherwise it'd be sort of falling just beyond the back, and then if you put it in here. Two Blu-rays and a DVD. Um, yeah, I really love this film. Um, I have seen the uh, Swedish uh, trilogy. Um, you know, it's uh, that's very good. Um, I, I watched it with the original Swedish subtitles, and then later saw it with the uh, dub. And the dub, uh, at least from my recollection, it's been a while since I've watched those films, um, the dub is actually quite good. You know, it's not one of those foreign films where if you, where they have an English dub, that the dub is just very bad. You know, the, the people who did it did a very good job. Um, uh, and so, and that was all after seeing this film. Um, you know, the performances are excellent, the direction and everything is, uh, fantastic. Um, Daniel Craig and Rooney Mara in particular, I think, are really fantastic. Their chemistry is just, uh, incredible. Um, uh, Rooney Mara, uh, got nominated for an Academy Award, and I believe she should have won, um, Lost to Meryl Streep, I believe, was it the uh, Iron Lady? Yeah, and um, it seems like that was because you know Meryl Streep didn't have an, uh, hadn't won an Oscar since like the '80s, and so, and she's been nominated for you know, 
it seems like almost every year, every other year at least, um, since the first time she was ever nominated. Um, and she is a very good actress. You know, Meryl Streep is uh, really good um, at what she does. She doesn't always pick the best projects, but some. But you know, she's very good. You know, uh, at acting. You know, she's just uh, incredible. But Rudy Mara really, her performance as Elizabeth is really incredible. Um, you know, uh, from what I recall, this really does uh, stick fairly close to the book, though there are certain aspects of the book that did not enter the film, which is probably for the best, like, uh, Mikhail is, uh, you know, like, sleeps with one of the Henrik's, uh, uh, like, one of the women related to Henrik, uh, I'm trying to recall exactly which one it is, but Anyway, there's some relative, I think, like, probably like a, I don't want to say daughter, well, it could be, maybe another niece or daughter, or whatever, but he has an affair uh, with her, like she's married or whatever, they, they have a relationship, a, a sexual relationship, basically, and, um, as he does with Elizabeth, though, with Elizabeth, it, you know, when you see uh, how everything comes together with him, it makes more sense, and, um, you know, he has a, a relationship also with uh, a woman who works at his uh, magazine company, uh, played by Robin Wright. Um, basically, uh, the affair that he had with her wrecked his marriage, but not um, her marriage. You know, her marriage is essentially uh, was able to go on, whereas his fell apart and. Um, he has a daughter, whom he sees here and there, um, and uh, and he seems to really love his daughter, which is of course good. Um, but you know, with how things are, it, things are not very easy as a result um, of how everything like turned out uh, uh, with his marriage and all. Um, but. Um, when Elizabeth en en enters the picture, uh, you know, and she has her own, uh, uh, if you haven't seen it, I don't want to really uh, talk too much about what it goes on, because some of the stuff really is very, uh, uh, it's not very pleasant to talk about, I'll just say that, um, though there is, I guess, from that, uh, uh, unfortunate uh, 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 incident, uh, 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 and one in particular, though I guess there's a few, like or so, like one or two before, but one in particular is very unfortunate. But she does get like revenge, and it's really cool to see when that happens. Um, you know, it's very satisfying. Um, but you know, it, you know, uh, her background. Uh, you know, and also how she's really smart and everything. It's, it's she's a very interesting character in the books and in this film and the Swedish trilogy. Um, and there and there is supposed to also be a follow up, which I've talked about before. How you know, very early on when this I did this uh, uh, series um, where they were going to have. The sequels, the two sequels, you know, Rooney Mara was uh, signed on to do three films. Daniel Craig wasn't, but then again, he's had a contract with James Bond, and so he likely didn't want to have to do two franchises he's contractually obligated to where there's a potential lapse in which, you know, scheduling is going to be on one will be halted, likely, this franchise, because, you know, he's doing James Bond, which is a really, you know, of course, a huge and big franchise. 
Um, um, I think uh, Daniel Craig wouldn't have... I don't believe he would have minded ever going to... back to this part, you know, but, you know... You know, I guess he had an out in the sense of if he was too busy with not just James Bond, but did other things, he could always say he doesn't want to do it. Um, whereas Rudy Mara, that was contractually obligated. Though she did say that she really didn't want to uh, do the films without him, which I think speaks volumes to, you know, just sort of like what they created um, <clears throat> in the making of this film. They created something like a very good friendship and that, you know, they, uh, that she would rather, you know, possibly wait months or a year just so he could be in the film. Um, and David Fincher, I don't believe was ever, uh, contracted to do more, but, um, there are some stuff I've read where he, had an interest in doing at least it seemed like he had an interest uh, at least to the effect that uh, seeing how they're gonna do write the next two scripts you know one after another so they, they can film them back to back um, and then they replaced one screenwriter and that uh, at some point they were the scripts were completely done but we're essentially just waiting for all the key people in this film that would return for the next two to be available to make them. Um, uh, but then, you know, the Sony hack happened because um, this is a, a Columbia film. So, you know, around that time, you know, they, they you know, uh, Sony, you know, you know, became more, you know, they, <clears throat> you know, that's a Sony property and all. And so they, uh, uh, had to change certain things with film, with various films. Um, I know the fourth Bond uh, film, Daniel Craig did, you know, Spectre. I know uh, elements of that film had to be changed because of the leak. And because of that, that seemed to be like the definite nail on the coffin of any sequel to this. Because if you've seen the Swedish trilogy, if you've read the books... Uh, I guess particularly the first three. You know, the, the story is actually really interesting of how these characters, what they go on, and also how they meet up. Because by the end of this film, in the story, uh, Elizabeth and Mikhail kind of, uh, their paths are, they seem to be going in a very similar direction and yet also veer off. Um, and just how they eventually wind up uh, back together, uh, I think is very fascinating. And David Fincher said that the script was uh, for the second film was actually a, uh, fairly different from the book. And so uh, I can only imagine uh, where the second film would have gone, you know, even more than what we already know with the film version of the sequel as well as the book. Um, it's very interesting to have, uh, of where we could have seen this uh, series gone. Um, but, you know, uh, we got one film. It's really good. Um, ten years old now. Um, I still like to watch it every so often. Um, uh, yeah, I really uh, like Daniel Craig and Rooney Mara in this film. I mean, everybody is great. You know, Stellan Skarsgård, he, you know, he's, uh, he's be a bit sinister, essentially. <laughs> Which, I guess, you know, isn't too hard, I guess, to imagine uh, for Stellan Skarsgård, uh, considering he has played villainous parts in the past. Um, uh, sinister parts. You know, everybody's incredible in here. Um, I know Daniel Craig did not have a Swedish accent like uh, all the others, though uh, he was coming off of a film, uh, I 
like Cowboys versus Aliens, and he agreed to do this film, but, you know, the time required for him to perfect a good accent, a good Swedish accent, where it wouldn't really affect his acting and his performance, unfortunately, he wasn't, um, you know, the time wasn't there, and he's like, you know, he wouldn't want that to possibly affect his performance where he's trying to get a good accent, whereas his acting itself, you know, isn't very good. You know, we've seen that with, like, um, uh, Keanu Reeves in uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula. You know, he's a fine actor, um, but uh, part of the reason he isn't very good, um, at least most people don't consider him very good, is because he was too busy trying to have a good like English accent you know he his character like, like he should have an English a accent uh, but uh, because he was trying to perfect one that just really affected his performance and so you, you got people who saying he was the worst part of the film or the weakest link or Maybe it's mixed bag with people regarding Keanu Reeves and Dracula. Um, so he didn't do that, go that route, and he has his English accent, you know, Daniel Craig does. Um, but, you know, I think that probably does work in his favor, and that he didn't try to force himself to have a Swedish accent when, you know, time wasn't on his side from the moment he agreed to when he was finally able to get there and, uh, you know, read the script again, uh, possibly any rewrites that might have occurred from the time he read it and agreed or something, you know, you know, he gives a very good performance, um, for Demera, I think people will agree she gave the best performance, but I think Daniel Craig's performance is also really good, may not have, uh, gotten on it him nominated for an Academy Award or anything, but, you know, it's very good, you know, uh, the story is very good, it's like a mystery, you know, if you like mysteries and haven't seen this film, um, I think it's worth checking out, uh, at least to see once, you know, there is some graphic stuff going on, you know, and sexual stuff, uh, I guess I'll just say here, like, um, what happens with, uh, Elizabeth, what I mentioned earlier was, uh, she gets raped by some guy who's supposed to, you know, help handle her finances and all that stuff, because um, she's like a ward of the state because of things from her past and, uh, and other stuff. you got to watch the film to really, because, you know, I could explain it, but, you know, I could probably also might leave out uh, one or two details that's important, but anyway, he rapes her, he's also... Like anytime she wants an advance on something to buy something or use something with money, you know, she, she has to do certain uh, <clears throat> sexual things, and that's very, uh, it's not pleasant, and the whole rape thing especially is not pleasant. Uh, but she does uh, get revenge on him later, so, you know, at the, I guess, you know, there is a, silver lining in a way, you know, you know, the guy gets, uh, uh basically gets his, and he, she also tattoos, uh, like, I am a rapist pig on him, so, you know, that's, uh, very, uh, It's a very good film. Um, everybody does a great job. Um, I think this might be uh, my second favorite Fincher film, uh, right behind uh, Zodiac. Uh, Zodiac, in my opinion, is the best film he has made. Um, though there's also Seven, which is also very good. And there's Fight Club, you know, cult favorite, um, and many others. There's, there's various other films he's done that's very good uh, so yeah that's my overall thoughts those are my overall thoughts on the girl with the dragon tattoo shame we didn't get to see 
more from this series, but, you know, just be happy with what you got. Uh, I guess better that we got uh, one American adaptation that's very good than, you know, none. Um, and yeah, that's all I have to say. Uh, hope all of you are doing well. Hope everybody's had a great week, had a great year. Hope all of you will have a great weekend and a great new year and a great first week of 2022. So uh, until next time, take care and I'll see you all later.